In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the Vaccine Damages Payment Service, which is set up by the government to compensate people who suffer severe disability after receiving the vaccine and as a result of it. What happens if you become ill after the coronavirus vaccine? Hello, I'm Barrister Daniel Barnett, and one important point to bear in mind, first of all, is that I'm a lawyer, not a medic, and so I'm addressing this from a legal perspective and not a medical perspective. But it's worth pointing out that from the gov.uk website, some side effects are normal from the coronavirus vaccine and are fully expected, including having a painful, heavy feeling and tenderness in the arm where you had your injection. This tends to be worse around one to two days after the vaccine. Feeling tired, headaches, or general aches, or mild flu-like symptoms. Now, those sorts of side effects are common with many vaccines, but the coronavirus vaccine, of course, in common with other vaccines, has been tested with tens of thousands of people extensively by the MHRA, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. If you're a subscriber or believer in conspiracy theories, you're probably not going to believe that these tests have been carried out with appropriate scientific rigor and that the results have been reported accurately. But I do trust what the scientists tell me. Uh, I think they're the best source of information available. It's up to you whether you choose to believe it or disregard it. Having said that, because of the accelerated testing and it being compacted into a very short period of time, there are people who are anxious that there might be side effects that haven't yet been picked up. And that leads to something called vaccine hesitancy, which is described by the World Health Organization as the reluctance or refusal to vaccinate despite the availability of vaccines. Uh, vaccine hesitancy can arise because of the influence of the anti-vaccination movement or because of a mistaken belief that uh, either you as an individual or the country as a whole has acquired either individual or herd immunity. So to try to give some reassurance, the government has said that if anybody ends up being severely disabled as a result of the coronavirus vaccine, they can get a financial payment from the Vaccine Damages Payment Service. The Vaccine Damages Payment Service is something that's been around a long time, and you can see the legislation, the Vaccine Damages Payments Act, 1979. It mainly applies to vaccinations given as a child, but it also applies to vaccinations given by adults for specific diseases. For example, polio, rubella, and swine flu. As of the 2nd of December, COVID-19 is added as a disease to which the Vaccine Damages Payments Act applies. So what happens if you become ill from the vaccine? Well, you have to show that you have become severely disabled as a result of the vaccination. Severe disability is defined as at least a 60% disablement. It could be a mental or physical disability, and it will be based on what your doctors say and on medical records from the treatment for whatever side effects you might suffer as a result of the vaccination. There are prescribed degrees of disability, and I'll include the link in the notes below, but severe disability essentially means a life-changing injury. It's not going to cover the expected symptoms, such as the sore arm, uh, flu-like symptoms for a couple of days, etc. You've got to establish that the disability happens as a result of the vaccine and isn't something that would have happened anyway. Now, that's going to be very difficult to do. In fact, it's going to be impossible to do without significant medical support from experts. And you're unlikely to get that on an individual basis. It's likely that a number of people will have had to have suffered the same side effects so that the consequence, the side effect, the disability becomes a recognized disability of the coronavirus vaccine seen whether it takes a court to say that or medics to say that. But again, there is no evidence that this is actually the case. The Vaccine Damages Payment Service is there as a backup, as a failsafe, in case something goes wrong, but it's not expected there will be any side effects f other than the minimal ones from the coronavirus vaccine. But if it does happen, you put in a claim to the Department of Work and Pensions, and I'll include a link to the claim form in the show notes below. You can also phone the Vaccine Damages Payment unit and their telephone number is 01772 899944. The claim has to be put in within six years of the vaccination or by the time you reach 21 if you were a child at the time of the vaccination. 
If your claim is successful, you'll receive a one-off payment of £120,000. Now, it's important to note that's a one-off payment. It doesn't matter what level of earnings you might lose into the future. You don't even need to have lost any earnings. There's no ongoing payment to cover any ongoing loss of earnings you might have in the long term. It's a one-off payment of £120,000. If you claim and your claim is unsuccessful, you can appeal. It's known as mandatory reversal and the procedure for doing that is set out on the vaccine damages payment unit website again i'll include a link in the notes below but please don't be put off having the vaccine by anything i've said here the compensation scheme is a safety net designed to reassure those who might be worried about having the vaccine there is absolutely no evidence that the vaccine is dangerous in any way it's in no way a signifier that the government believes that the vaccine might be dangerous and the overwhelming consensus of medical opinion is that the benefits of having the vaccine massively outweigh the risks i'll certainly be getting the vaccine as soon as it's my turn thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please do like it it helps other people find this channel please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and i have a whole series of explainer videos on aspects of employment law criminal law family law and i'm adding more areas of law as the weeks and months go past. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Barrister Daniel Barnett. Bye-bye.